A Villain's Fortune, Out of Promise, You'll Love Me Forever, written by Rodney Johnson. The air hung thick and heavy, like the silence before a storm. Sweat trickled down Ray's temple, the taste of salt stinging his eyes. He gripped the duffel bag tighter, the coarse canvas a poor substitute for comfort. Across the street, the neon sign of the First National Bank flickered, a beacon in the encroaching darkness. Ray's heart pounded against his ribs, each thud a stark reminder of the ticking clock. This sleepy town, nestled amidst rolling hills and whispering cornfields, was about to witness an awakening, an unwelcome one. A part of him buried deep beneath layers of desperation and false hope screamed for him to turn back, to disappear into the anonymity of the approaching night. But it was a whisper against a hurricane. Josie's voice, sharp and cold, pierced through the static in his earpiece. Five minutes, Ray, don't screw this up. Her words, devoid of warmth or reassurance, were a slap of reality. He was in too deep. There was no backing out now. Josie, the mastermind, a force of nature disguised in a deceptively petite frame. Josie was the kind of person who could command a room without uttering a single word. Her presence was magnetic, drawing people in and making them hang on her every word. She had a way of making you feel like you were the most important person in the world, even as she was plotting your downfall. Her eyes, sharp as shards of ice, held a glint of ambition that bordered on ruthless. They were the eyes of someone who had seen too much and learned to use every bit of it to her advantage. Josie's gaze could pierce through the toughest of exteriors, laying bare the vulnerabilities of those who dared to oppose her. She had orchestrated this entire operation. Her intricate plan spun with the precision of a spider weaving its web. Every detail was meticulously thought out, every contingency accounted for. Josie was a master strategist, always three steps ahead of everyone else. Her mind was a labyrinth of schemes and counter-schemes, each more complex than the last. Then there was Lewis, the muscle, a hulking figure with a permanent scowl etched onto his face. Lewis was the kind of man who could silence a room with just a look. His sheer physical presence was enough to make even the bravest of men think twice before crossing him. He was a wall of muscle and intimidation, a living, breathing deterrent to anyone who might get in their way. Lewis was a man of few words, his presence alone a potent threat. He didn't need to speak to make his intentions clear, his actions spoke volumes. Lewis was the enforcer, the one who made sure everyone stayed in line. His loyalty to Josie was unwavering, and he would do whatever it took to protect her and their operation. He lived for the adrenaline rush, the thrill of the game, the danger, the excitement, the constant edge of uncertainty. It was what kept him going. For Lewis, the operation was more than just a job. It was a way of life. The thrill of the chase, the satisfaction of a job well done, the rush of victory, these were the things that made him feel alive. Ray often wondered if Lewis had any humanity left in him or if it had been consumed by the violence that seemed to cling to him like a shroud. There were moments when Ray thought he saw a flicker of something in Lewis's eyes, a hint of the man he might have been before the world hardened him. But those moments were fleeting, quickly swallowed up by the darkness that seemed to envelop him. And finally, there was Vegas, the wild card, a jittery young man with a nervous laugh and an unsettling fascination with explosives. Vegas was unpredictable, a loose cannon who could either be their greatest asset or their biggest liability. His knowledge of explosives was unparalleled, but his erratic behavior made him a constant source of anxiety for the team. He was in charge of disabling the alarm system, a task that filled Ray with a sense of dread. The thought of Vegas handling something so critical made Ray's stomach churn. One wrong move, one moment of distraction, and everything could go up in flames. But despite his fears, Ray had to trust that Vegas knew what he was doing. Vegas, despite his claims of expertise, always seemed to be one wrong wire away from disaster. His hands would shake, his eyes darting nervously as he worked. Ray couldn't help but hold his breath every time Vegas approached the alarm system, praying that this wouldn't be the time everything went wrong. Ray, however, was just a pawn, a mechanic with a gambling debt and a heart full of regret. Ray had never intended to get involved in something like this. He had dreams once, plans for a future that didn't involve crime and danger. 
but life had a way of derailing even the best laid plans, and Ray found himself caught in a web he couldn't escape. He had stumbled into this world through a series of bad decisions, each one leading him further down a path he never intended to tread. It started with a few bad bets, a little too much confidence in his luck. Before he knew it, he was in over his head, owing money to people who didn't take kindly to debtors. Now he was trapped, his fate intertwined with these hardened criminals. Every day was a struggle to survive, to find a way out of the mess he had created. Ray knew he was in too deep, but he couldn't see a way out. He was a pawn in a game he didn't understand, a game that was being played by people far more dangerous and cunning than he could ever hope to be. The plan was audacious, bordering on insane. It was the kind of scheme that only the most desperate or the most daring would even consider. Every detail had been scrutinized, every possible outcome analyzed, yet the inherent risk was undeniable. A high-stakes gamble with lives hanging in the balance, the city seemed to hold its breath, the tension palpable in the air. Every shadow seemed to whisper of danger, every flicker of light a potential threat. Josie had chosen this bank for a reason. Small town security, lax protocols, and a vault rumored to hold a treasure trove of untraceable bearer bonds. It was the perfect target, or so it seemed. The sleepy town had no idea what was coming. Their roles were clearly defined. Vegas would handle the alarm. His expertise in bypassing security systems was unmatched. He had spent years perfecting his craft, and tonight, it would be put to the ultimate test. Lewis would secure the hostages, ensuring that no one could raise an alarm or interfere. His imposing presence and calm demeanor were crucial in keeping the situation under control. And Ray, the reluctant getaway driver, would wait with the engine running. His role seemed simple, but the pressure was immense. Every second felt like an eternity as he sat there, the weight of the mission pressing down on him. Josie, the puppet master, would be their eyes and ears inside, directing their every move. Her sharp mind and quick thinking were the linchpins of the operation. She had orchestrated every detail, and now it was time to see if her plan would hold up under the strain of reality. But as the minutes ticked by, a knot of unease tightened in Ray's stomach. The stillness of the night was unnerving, each tick of the clock amplifying his anxiety. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go terribly wrong. The plan, so meticulously crafted on paper, felt different in the cold reality of the night. The theoretical precision was now a chaotic dance of nerves and adrenaline. Doubts began to creep in, gnawing at the edges of his resolve. The weight of their actions, the potential consequences, pressed down on him, threatening to suffocate him. Every breath felt laboured, every heartbeat a reminder of the stakes. The enormity of what they were attempting was almost too much to bear. He thought of Sarah, his eight-year-old. He felt like anything but. The thought sent a fresh wave of guilt washing over him, leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. He had convinced himself that this was for her, that the money would secure her future. But now, in the stillness of the night, those justifications felt hollow. The reality of his choices was inescapable, and the weight of his guilt was almost too much to bear. The silence of the night was shattered by the screech of tires as Lewis pulled up in a stolen sedan. The city was cloaked in darkness, the only light coming from the occasional street lamp casting eerie shadows on the pavement. The air was thick with tension, a palpable sense of foreboding hanging over the deserted streets. His face, illuminated by the dashboard lights, was a mask of grim determination. Every muscle in his body was taut, his eyes fixed on the road ahead. He knew there was no room for error tonight. The stakes were too high and the consequences of failure too dire to contemplate. Ray's hand trembled as he tossed him the duffel bag containing their illicit tools. The weight of the bag seemed to mirror the weight of the responsibility on his shoulders. He could feel the sweat trickling down his back, his heart pounding in his chest like a drum. Through the earpiece, Josie's voice was a steady stream of instructions, her tone brooking no argument. She was the mastermind behind this operation, the one who had meticulously planned every detail. Her calm, authoritative voice was the anchor that kept them all grounded, even as the storm of uncertainty raged around them. Vegas, 
his voice high-pitched with nerves, confirmed that the alarm system was down. He was the tech wizard of the group, the one who could hack into any system and disable any security measure. But even he couldn't hide the fear in his voice, the fear that something could go wrong at any moment. Everything was going according to plan. They had rehearsed this scenario countless times, each member of the team knowing their role to perfection. But no amount of planning could eliminate the unpredictability of the real world, the variables that could throw a wrench into their carefully laid plans. Yet, Ray couldn't shake the feeling that they were walking a tightrope over an abyss. One wrong move, one misstep, and they would all come crashing down. The fear gnawed at him, a constant reminder of the precariousness of their situation. A sudden commotion from inside the bank sent a jolt of adrenaline through Ray's veins. He could hear the muffled sounds of a struggle, the unmistakable noise of chaos breaking out. His mind raced, trying to process what was happening to anticipate the next move. A muffled scream, followed by the shattering of glass. His blood ran cold. This wasn't part of the plan. The carefully orchestrated heist was unravelling before his eyes, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. This wasn't part of the plan. The realisation hit him like a punch to the gut, the cold, hard truth that they were no longer in control. The plan was falling apart, and with it, their hopes of a clean getaway. Josie's voice, usually so composed, was laced with a hint of panic. She was the rock of the group, the one who always kept her cool under pressure. But even she couldn't hide the fear in her voice, the fear that their carefully laid plans were crumbling around them. Lewis, what's going on in there? The question hung in the air, a desperate plea for information, for some semblance of control in a situation that was rapidly spiralling out of control. Lewis, his voice a guttural growl, responded, we got a hero. The word sent a chill down Ray's spine. A hero. Someone who was willing to risk everything to stop them, to stand in their way. Security guard tried to play John Wayne. The image of the guard, standing tall and defiant, flashed through Ray's mind. He could see the determination in the man's eyes, the unwavering resolve to protect what was his. A chilling silence followed, broken only by Josie's sharp intake of breath. The tension was palpable, the air thick with fear and uncertainty. They were on the edge of a precipice, teetering on the brink of disaster. The knot in Ray's stomach tightened, threatening to consume him. This was it, the moment of truth, the point where everything could go horribly wrong or miraculously right, the point of no return. There was no turning back now. They were committed for better or worse. The only thing they could do was move forward and hope that their luck would hold out. Follow, like and subscribe. Join me at Rodney's Publishing for more perks.